Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined by George Bennett. He's the CEO at Rainbow Rare Earths, and they are the London listed developer and producer of rare earth metals. Rainbow Rare Earths are successfully testing a process flow sheet for the uh, phosphogypsum stack at Falabora in South Africa. And now they have just signed a memorandum of understanding with the Mosaic Company in Brazil to jointly develop a process flow sheet and a preliminary economic assessment of the potential to extract rare earths from Mosaic's own phosphogypsum stack. Greetings, George. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having me once again, Donald. It's a pleasure to be on your show as always. Yes, yes. And I'm very keen to hear what's happening at Falabora as well as what's happening in Brazil. So, uh, but let's start with the, the, the new phosphogypsum stack, uh, which, you've, uh, which you're working with in Brazil. Uh, you wish to extract rare earths from this, this time in Minas Gerais in Brazil. So give us the background, George. How did this all come about? Well, because of our successful development of the process flow sheet for the phosphogypsum stack at Palabora, I've been looking for other opportunities around the world. And we signed a memorandum, uh, uh, sorry, a master agreement with OCP in Morocco. But this is, uh, but their phosphogypsum are of a sedimentary nature, whereas I was looking for a similar acid to Palabora, which is a hydro carbonatite source of, of phosphate slurry, uh, and going through the same process to produce phosphoric acid and create a gypsum stack. Um, and uh, I identified this opportunity in Brazil, and I started to make uh, contact with Mosaic some time ago. We signed an NDA, led to a site visit in March this year, where we established that um, it, this is a very, very large uh, phosphogypsum stack. It's been operated on since 1980, I think. So it's, uh, we estimate it could be at least twice the size of Palabora. And very importantly, it's still a live stream. In other words, the current resource that's feeding this phosphoric acid plant in Brazil has got a mine life of excess of 25 years, really, to believe. Uh, which takes us, it takes us very neatly to Falabora in uh, South Africa. Um, whereabouts are you with that? Because there are huge similarities between the, 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 the two projects. Any progress you make with Falabora can then be translated directly uh, uh, to the project in Brazil. Right. So just to give um, some listeners or um, uh, interest participants some background, at Palabora, what we have is we've got a, a phosphogypsum uh, stacks, two stacks of 30 odd million tons of phosphogypsum that is a result of a uh, phosphate hard rock mining operation next door, uh, mined by a company called Phoscor. They produce a phosphate slurry, which was then fed next door to a phosphoric acid plant run by Sassel in South Africa, the chemical uh, giant. And um, this uh, phosphoric acid um, plant produced phosphoric acid for the fertilizer industry, and it produced a phosph uh, phosphogypsum waste uh, residue, which was deposited onto two stacks. Now, the rivers are in the hard rock phosphate rock, but they're not economic uh, to mine for the if you just mine uh, for the rares themselves. The fact that Fosco produce a phosphate slurry, the rares were concentrated in the slurry, as I said, um, sent next door, where it underwent further processing to create uh, phosphoric acid for the fertilizer industry, and the rares were further upgraded in that uh, in that production process, and they were they deported with the gypsum onto the two gypsum waste residue stacks. So now we sit with economic values of rares in the phosphogypsum and very similar to um, our nuclear deposits in China, that they mine in China and Myanmar, where you've got very, very low um, mining costs. At Pelabor, we've got a very, very low mining cost because we would just use uh, um, high pressure hoses to reclaim the phosphogypsum and sluice it into our, our processing plant that we've then developed. So the grades in uh, Pelabor are circa six to 10 times higher grade than you get with our uh, projects in, in, in Myanmar and China. And at Uberaba, I identified a very, very similar um, asset where you had hard rock carbonatite being mined um, for phosphate rock. That phosphate is then concentrated into a slurry, pumped into a soft, uh, phosphoric acid plant, which adds sulfuric acid and heat, similar to what they did at Palabora. And that phosphoric acid process uh, at Uberaba in Brazil has produced a massive gyp a gypsum stack there that we estimate is, is, is possibly at least twice the size that we have at Palabora. So there are huge uh, similarities. With us uh, securing this asset uh, for Rainbow, we also 
went and uh, uh, used a new separation technique for the back end the separation of rivers uh, with a company in Florida called KTEC. Florida have been, uh, KTEC and Florida have been uh, doing um, work on, on phosphate gypsum for over 20 years. Florida is the heart of phosphate mining in the US. And very importantly, KTEC uh, patented and developed continuous iron exchange, which is used in the uranium industry that we've got lots of experience uh, as a team at Rainbow and continuous iron chromatography, which is a de facto way now that we are separating earth um, oxide out of uh, our, our live acid stream that will have a pellet And the huge amount of this, of this RP and tech that we've got is applicable, we believe, to what we have now in, in Brazil with the mosaic opportunity. Yes, yeah, in, in, in particular, you've created a process flow sheet which is a very technical piece of work. And you've spent many, many months uh, getting that just right at Falabora. And you believe you can take that process flow sheet and transfer it to uh, uh, to uh, Uberuba. Correct. Um, our flow sheet that we've developed at Rainbow has been proven at bench and lab scale uh, test work. We are currently uh, now uh, doing the, the final um, um, piloting of this flow sheet. Uh, we started the front end piloting uh, at Mintec in South Africa, which will produce a mixture of sulfate, which in itself is a saleable product. It's about 60% payable to the price of separated earth oxides. So the, the, the mixture of sulfate will then be shipped to, um, to KTEC, where we're currently building our back end uh, pilot plant, which will use the separation technique I mentioned earlier to produce final separated earth oxides. The, the front end at Palabora, as I mentioned, it has already been commissioned, and we will be producing our first mixture of sulfate uh, within this quarter. And by the end of this quarter, we'll have successfully um, done the final de-risking of the flow sheet, which is using the KTEC process at the back end in Florida. I might add that the front end flow sheet is all using standard uh, processing techniques used in the road industry. So that's effectively a de-risk front end project that we have at Palabora now. And as I said, a huge amount of this flow sheet will be applicable to what we have now um, secured uh, with Mosaic uh, in Brazil. I might, I might add that no two all bodies are the same. The Rainbow team uh, that I have and myself, we've got a huge amount of experience in developing and building process plants for mining operations around the world. Uh, the team and I have built uh, collectively over 80 process plants around the world. And then every single plant that we've designed and built as a team we know that every single ore body is slightly different, so there will be there will be some um, some uh, some differences between the carbonatite that that uh, mosaic mined and the carbonatite that Foscor mined. But as I mentioned, a huge part of the the the, the RP that we've developed for, for Palabora will be applicable in Brazil, which gives us a big head start on the project. So, in broad brush terms, uh, you've signed a memor memorandum of understanding uh, with the mosaic. So, tell us what that's about and the work you're going to be doing on the pre preliminary economic assessment. So that MOU um, is, is assigned to, to start the initial work, which is what we've already started, I might add, which is to test sample at SGS Laboratories in Toronto for assay and, and leaching uh, characteristics of the mosaic uh, material. And then from that, we will then uh, have to define a drill program to, to exactly define the size of the resource, confirm the grade, which we believe to be similar to Palabora, in fact, probably higher grade than Palabora, which is a big plus, and then uh, go and do a PEA like we did at Palabora to prove that we have an economic project in Brazil. And then after that, we would look to go into, uh, into a definitive agreement with, with Mosaic. Might add that at the moment, we are funding this 50-50 just to give you some color on, on the intention of the MOU. Well, that's very interesting. Mosaic uh, uh, are the world's leading producer of concentrated produce, uh, of, of concentrated phosphate and potash. They're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So these these they are mosaic are real players, aren't they? This this whole project must have great potential for you, great economic potential uh, for Rainbow. Well, as you mentioned, Mosaic are a, a global multinational company with a large market cap, and the fact that Rainbow have been able to do this deal with them, I think, speaks volumes. For what we're bringing to the party and basically this is going to be very very um, significant for both rainbow and mosaic in terms of of of, of EBITDA generated by the project you just have to look at the EBITDA numbers in our pea for for Palabora to get some kind of idea of the of the potential of the mosaic opportunity that uh, 
that we've uh, that we see in Brazil. Okay, and how significant is this for Rainbow? This will be the first time you've actually operated outside of the African continent, I presume. No. Well, no. yes, um, it is, it's hugely significant for Rainbow because not only is it um, giving a huge amount of, of credibility to our RP and the flow sheet that we developed. I might add that Mosaic asked for exclusivity for Rainbow in Brazil. There's another opportunity in Brazil we were talking to, but Mosaic being such a large company asking for exclusivity, we went with Mosaic. But basically, it confirms, as I said, you know, our RP and, and the fact that we have the rights to the KTEC backend technology for Brazil as well. It, um, you know, put, it put us in a position that we, we could neg negotiate with Mosaic. And as I said, this is very significant because it deals Rainbow as a company from in terms of having two major projects on different continents, uh, which will eventually be a producer of significant amounts of separated rare earth oxides uh, that are key for permanent magnets. And we're the only rare earth company in the world that will have two significant uh, producing assets on two different continents, which is hugely de-risking for any investor. That all sounds very exciting. How excited are you by all this, uh, George? I'm very excited to be where we are. I must, I must say it. It's, uh, uh, I was surprised at the speed at which we moved at Mosaic. I only visited them in March. And within three months, we managed to sign a, a significant MOU. And as I said, that's, uh, that's with a $12 billion company. Most companies of that size don't move that quickly. So I'm very pleased we've got this far so quickly. As I said, within a couple of weeks of visiting Mosaic, we already had sample in, in Canada for testing. Um, so even while we, we were negotiating the MOU, we already were moving ahead with, uh, with starting to get sample to Toronto and start doing assay and test work on that sample. Ah, it's fantastic to hear. They're obviously very, very keen on the project and want to move on with it quickly. Well, as you can see, there's a very positive quote in the RNS from Mosaic. And yes, I see the, the importance of this project. Not only is it important for uh, Rainbow Mosaic, but once again, this will be also cleaning up uh, uh, environmental um, uh, issue um, with the Mosaic stack uh, in Brazil, similar to what we're doing at Paderborn. We know our project has got huge environmental credits because we, we are cleaning up the acid water associated with these stacks. We we uh, we creating a banana phosphate gypsum, and you know, and this is very significant, I believe, for mosaic as well. If I could just take you back to Falabora uh, uh, momentarily, what kind of recovery rates are you looking at uh, there? What are the key metrics that you would point us to, and would you hope to eventually replicate those key metrics uh, in uh, Uberuba in Brazil? Well, um, to start with, our recovery rates and. Uh, from our Pelabora assets sitting at about 65% overall recovery of risks from the phosphogypsum. Um, our PA, which we published in, uh, in October, which you spot risk pricing at the time, uh, showed that we have a project that will deliver for the life of the project at least $200 million of EBITDA with an EBITDA margin of over 75%, a post tax RRR of over 44%. And we've got um, uh, an NPV of $627 million on our Pelabora project um, using NPV discount rate of 10, which is very conservative, and that's a post-tax NPV as well. And as I said, very significantly, um, you know, the capex for that project is, for the total project, is circa $300 million. And in terms of, of, of global earth projects, this is the lowest capex per ton of separate earth oxides that you'll find in the world. And especially, especially low OPEX as well. Our OPEX are $33.86 uh, per kilogram of separated root oxides. We know is the lowest in the Western world. And so that gives an idea of what we would like to replicate at, uh, at Uberaba in Brazil because of the, of the nature of, of both assets are, are so similar. So we wouldn't expect, we would expect to have, there I say it, fairly similar numbers. Um, you know, but once again, we have to do the work. Um, I'm very loath to make uh, claims that I haven't proven. You'll notice that every statement I make in Rainbow is backed up by a huge amount of test work, uh, lab test work, and so forth. And once again, we know Uber Rob is a significant uh, opportunity. We believe it will be super, super um, economic, but we have to do the work to prove that. But we've got a good team. And our team's delivered on Pelabora, and I know our team will be able to deliver in Brazil as well.
That makes good sense, uh, uh, George. A final broad question for you. What's been going on in the rare earth sector since we spoke, and in particular, what's been happening in China? There we go. Last question for you. Sure. Well, as you know, I think it was just over a week ago, China announced that they're going to ban the export of gallium and germanium uh, to the US, uh, also part of the rare earth suite. So very significant that China, the Chinese are using rare earths or they're weaponizing rare earths, so they've done it before and they, they are doing it again. I think that makes it even more important for companies like Rainbow to succeed. We already have the, uh, the US government has invested in Rainbow through the, the, the DFC who invested um, into Rainbow by TechMet uh, two months ago at 12%, they're the second largest shareholder in Rainbow via TechMet. And um, we see this uh, as being even more significant for the US government. And one thing, I was in Barcelona uh, at the end of last month for an international rare earth conference. It's very, very apparent yet all the, uh, well, not all, but yet a number of major auto auto um, manufacturers at the rare earth conference and permanent magnets, rare earth permanent magnets aren't going anywhere for a very long time. They are, in fact, the demand for them is even more confirmed in, uh, in, uh, in electric vehicles because they're trying to reduce the size of the battery. And as you reduce the size of the battery, your permanent magnet modes become even more important. So we see a very, very strong future for permanent magnets and, and, and electric vehicles, as obviously, as well as um, wind turbine generation, which requires a huge amount of permanent magnets made with rear earth elements. And of course, your consumer electronics still currently do, um, are, represent 50% of the, of the consumption for permanent magnets made out of rear earths. So the future for Bruce is very, very strong going forward. George, it's a pleasure to catch up with you as always. Uh, thank you very much for the Uberaba update. Thank you also for updating us about Falabora. It's absolutely great uh, to hear you putting all those things in context for us. If you're an RBW investor, you can just discuss this interview and much and many other things on the London Southeast Rainbow RBW uh, chat board. Feel free to follow us on Twitter. That's at London Southeast. And if you like this interview, then Google London Southeast YouTube channel, and you'll find the back catalogue of interviews that we've done with George and subscribe to receive our video content. Thanks for watching. And as they say in South Africa, do go well. <laughs>